Hi class! In this lecture video, I will be discussing the two types of circuits, series and parallel circuits, how they differ and how they are similar with each other. Now, before we begin, we must review a very important concept in circuits, that is Ohm's Law. Let us review your junior high school science. You learned in junior high school what we call the Ohm's Law. The Ohm's Law suggests that the voltage, resistance, and current, which are the three main variables in a circuit, are related or has a have a significant relationship with each other. And it can be summarized into an equation. V is equal to I R. This equation tells us that voltage is directly proportional to current. Now remember that current is the flow of charges in a conductor or in a circuit. Therefore, it suggests that the greater is the voltage of a source, then the greater or the faster is the flow of charges in a circuit. Another equation or relationship that we can get from this law is that current I is inversely proportional with resistance which suggests that the greater is the resistance in a conductor or in a circuit, the lesser is the current. And the lesser is the resistance in a circuit, the greater is the current. Graphically, the relationship of this law, of these variables in the law, looks like this. If the resistor is an ohmic resistor, then it obeys the Ohm's law. This graph tells us that as the voltage increases, the current also increases, as what is suggested in the equation V is equal to IR. V is directly proportional, or voltage is directly proportional to I. To apply Ohm's law, let us solve this problem. Say an electric flat iron draws a current of 15 amperes when connected to a 100 
Now that we've recalled Ohm's law, we are now ready to understand circuits. For circuits, we are probably familiar with the common house electrical designs that we are we have seen at home. So those circuits are connected into either series, parallel, or both series and parallel connections. But more often than not, house wirings are combinations of series and parallel circuits. We have learned from the previous lessons that we represent a, a circuit in terms of schematic diagram. This makes our representation much easier to follow and much easier to draw. Now, these are the common circuit elements that we will use. Among them are batteries, dry cells, resistors, or can sometimes be drawn like this, okay, a zigzag line. We will also use lamps or voltmeters, ammeters, and grounds sometimes, okay? Switch are also added, but they aren't that essential though. They are there to open and close the circuit. So now we move on to the first type of circuit the series circuit the series circuit looks like this in this circuit you can see that we have a battery source or a voltage source and we have several resistors connected in a single loop from this we can see that current may flow from one terminal of the battery positive passing through the first resistor to the second resistor to the third and back to the negative terminal. So current will flow only in a single loop. From this illustration, since you can see that there is a, only a single path for current, we can assume that the current in a series circuit, the current is constant. Let us prove this premise. I will draw this figure the circuit in here. Say so this is the battery. This is the first resistor. Second resistor. Third resistor. So let's label it. R sub 1, R sub 2, and R sub 3. Now, we will make some assumptions here. Let's say that the battery has a potential difference of 9 volts. And we can say that the current will start flowing from the positive terminal to the first resistor, the second and back to the battery. So this is the direction of the current flowing in the circuit. Since there's a single path for current, we can assume that the, we have current flowing in resistor one. We'll call that I sub one. Current in resistor one. There is also current in resistor two. And there is also current in resistor three. As the equation suggests, it, the current in resistor 1, 2, and 3 must be the same. Let's give values to the resistances, resistors. Let's assume that resistor 1 is equivalent to 2 ohms. Resistor 2, say, is equivalent to 1 ohms. And resistor 3 is equivalent to 3 ohms. All right. For, from here, we will maximize the usage of Ohm's law, which is V is equal to I times R. To prove that current is constant in a series circuit, we must compute for that magnitude. I is equal to V over R. This is just a derived equation from the general statement of Ohm's law. Now, what is this V right here? 
this is the total voltage of the circuit. So that is the total voltage produced by the battery. That's 9 volts. Now what is R? R right here is the equivalent resistance or the sum of all resistance values. The sum of all resistance values. So if you have three resistors in the circuit, you must add their values. Therefore, let's just solve for resistance. R equivalence is equal to R sub 1 plus R sub 2 plus R sub 3. Now input their values. R sub 1 has a resistance of 2 ohms. R sub 2, 1 ohms. And R sub 3, 3 ohms. Doing the math, you would get 6 ohms. Now that's the value that you're going to input into our equation for current in the circuit. Therefore, 6 or current is 9 volts divided by 6 ohms. You do the math, you'd get 1.5 amperes. This value is the current flowing through resistor 1, resistor 2, as well as resistor 3. Now, how about voltage? Is it also the same across the whole circuit? Unfortunately, no. Voltage is not constant across a CD circuit. It is distributed to each element in the circuit. That is, the value of the voltage across each of the resistors will depend on the magnitude of their resistance. So V sub 1 may not be equal to V sub 2, and V sub 2 may not be equal to V sub 3, and what have you. So how do we actually solve for the values of the voltage drop across each of these resistances? Again, we go back to Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. But when you do that, our current value is the current flowing through each of the resistors. And as mentioned a while ago, there is only one magnitude of current flowing in a series circuit, and that is the total current. So therefore, we can say that the current and the voltage drop in V sub 1 is equal to I sub 1, or also the value of the total current in the circuit times R, but resistance of the first resistor. For the voltage in the second resistor, that's I sub 2, and voltage in the third, I sub 3. Multiply them to their corresponding resistances. Now take note that I sub 1 plus, or rather, is equal to I sub 2, and it's equal to I sub 3, and all of these um, currents are all equal to I total that we calculated a while ago, as there's only one current in a series circuit. So therefore, we can substitute I sub 1 with 1.5, amperes times resistor 1, which is 2 ohms, times or equals 3 volts. For the second, it's again 1.5 amperes times 1 ohms. So that is 1.5 ohms. Next, 1.5 amperes again times 3 ohms. That is equal to 4.5 ohms. Oh, rather, voltage. So what do you notice with the voltage values? They are not the same. 
they are rather dependent on the value of the resistance. Notice that the third voltage is the greatest because voltage and resistance are directly proportional with each other. So the greater is the resistance in a certain element, the greater is the voltage. So right now, 3 is the maximum or greatest resistance in the circuit. Thus, it also has the greatest voltage, 4.5. The least resistance is 1 ohm. And it also has the least voltage. So you can see that the voltage is distributed. Nevertheless, if you add all of these voltages, we can see that V total is the sum of the voltages V sub 1, V sub 2, plus V sub 3. If you, inf if you input the values, 3 plus 1.5 plus 4.5 is 9 volts. And that is the original value of the voltage source, 9 volts. So the 9 volts was distributed to each of the circuit elements connected in a series circuit. Now, if you'll notice, this is very efficient because the current flowing through each of the circuit elements is the same. However, there is a disadvantage. Since there's only a single path for current to flow, once there is an interruption in the circuit, say one of the circuit elements connected is not working or busted, then the whole circuit will not work. That's the downside or disadvantage of a series circuit.